Hi, everyone. Welcome to our interview for Balkan in America. My name is Anna Pesheva. I'm Megan Yoksimovic. And today we have somebody from the Bosnian diaspora joining us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What is your name? Where were you born? And what diaspora is you and your family from? My name is Amir. Uh, I'm from Austin, Texas, and my family is originally uh, from Bosnia. Can you share a little bit about your family's migration story and how it shaped your identity as a member of the Bosnian diaspora in America? Like um, why your family decided to move uh, to the United States and more specifically, why in Austin? Yeah, so um, I guess I can go more in detail into that. My parents both started dating when they were like maybe in high school and then both went to university together and the war broke out. So um, my dad, I mean, it's a really long story, but my dad had some connection after, I think in 1994 with the university professor here in Texas, not in Austin, but somewhere close. So he was able to get, get out. My mom went to Turkey first and she went with my grandma cause she was injured and they were sending some refugees to the hospital. And so my mom went to Turkey and uh, finished school there. She also speaks Turkish too, but, um, and then she got in, or my dad found my mom, like since back then there was no cell phones and stuff and pretty much was like, hey, do you wanna come to Austin and like, you know, be with me? And then my mom said, uh, well, we have to get, like, if I'm gonna do that, we have to get married because I'm not just gonna come to date you. And so my dad found my mom, she said, or she said yes. And so they both came, um, moved to Austin and yeah, started their new life. And then I was born. And I mean, you asked how that has affected me or what was the second part of that question? How it shaped your identity as a member of the Bosnian diaspora in America. I mean, that's a, it's a big question, but I don't know. I mean, obviously because I grew up here and I had Bosnian parents, you know, everything like pretty much before I started going to school, my whole environment was pretty much like I was raised there. Like this was my first language or Bosnian was my first language. Um, the food I ate in the house, you know, all that stuff was, I was already being culturally raised the same I would as a kid would be in Bosnia. But when I started going to school, I guess that's when that mixing started to happen. I know you went to school back there for a couple years in Bosnia. Can you tell me like a little bit more about that as well? Yeah, um, for sure. And I can t talk about the mixing too, because I remember this is like a distinct thing in my childhood where it was in kindergarten and I was, you know, you're introducing your name to everyone and stuff. And like here I introduced myself as Amir, but my mom, my dad, any Bosnian would call me Amir. And so I remember trying, like, that's how I was saying, like, what's your name? My name's Ahmed. And everyone was like, what? Like, the teacher was just reading. She's like, Amir. And I was like, no, Ahmed. And she was like, you know, we could not get, get to that agreement. So that's like a distinct memory that I have where it's kind of like two identities, you know? It's like my mom says, Ahmed, but my, my friends would say, Amir. So it's like, um, that's the start of like that mixing. And then, yeah, so after a few years, I think I was uh, fourth fourth and fifth grade. Um, fourth and fifth grade, I moved back to Sarajevo. Um, and yeah, that was a really cool experience because you're still kind of early on and I was still early on in my childhood where it's like my brain is still really malleable. You know, I'm still absorbing a lot, especially like getting better at language and all this stuff. But at the same time, I'm still old enough for things not to be too difficult for me, like it was for my sister, who was only six, seven years old. But yeah, so I went to a Bosnian school there and, you know, it was immediately drop in. Obviously, I was still really good at language. But, you know, when you start going to school and like all your subjects are now like I remember biology was like a what the heck moment, because there's I remember just reading and not understanding like a single thing. Like I remember it was a diagram of a flower. And I didn't know a single word on it. So just like things like that, where it was really difficult. But after like a year and a half of going to school, I was like so much better with Bosnian. And then also like 
I was, I've turned like way more outgoing. Cause I don't know. I feel like Balkan people are just more sociable in general. Like my first day of school, I thought I was gonna be nervous, but everyone was like, Hey, I'm at Khanats. You know, like everyone in the school knew me. So it was just, um, yeah, it was a really cool experience too. Cause I got to get close to my family and everything else and made lifelong friends there too, that I still go back and see in the summers. Okay. So you pointed out how like you noticed uh, that Balkans are more sociable. Um, so kind of building off of that as somebody ha that has spent like significant time in America and a few years like in Bosnia, what are some other like key differences that you noticed in terms of culture, lifestyle or societal norms between the two countries? And how has this shaped like your perspective on the world and how you deal with situations? Yeah, I mean, yeah, starting off as a kid first, um, that specific moment moving there, the biggest thing for me was just like independence because, you know, my school here, like my elementary school was a couple blocks down, so pretty close. But even then, you know, like parents would walk you to school. There's like, that was like cross guards, school zone, and all this stuff. And it's like very like homey, you know? But my first day going to school there, I was, I just walked to the city. I, I, my first day, my parents went with me. But, you know, after that, it was just me, my friends, on the public transport. And we were all just like, uh, you know, walking into restaurants, kind of like you do in high school when you start driving and you go get lunch. We were doing that at like eight years old. And like people are just like, everything's more sociable. I don't know. Like, I don't really know how to like, explain it very well but growing up here you kind of schedule like play dates and stuff but there you know you just go out to the like whatever playground where we played basketball soccer and stuff and everyone would be so open right away and even now like when we like going to play pickup basketball is something that I do a lot and even now some people are just a lot more like oh like do we like ask them to play like you know like we don't know them but they're like there's, there's that like, you know, stranger disconnection here, but I feel like there, there's never any of that. And I feel like you guys probably know that too, because I feel like it's the same, same everywhere where we're just like, people say that we're the most open people. And it's kind of like, wow, you walk into a restaurant and then everyone's talking to you. I remember my first time in, uh, not my first time, but I went to split like two summers ago and my friends, that was like my first time my friends were all in Europe. And I was talking to the owner of like uh, some restaurant for like 30 minutes, just me and him. Some It was like 80 years old. He was telling me all about his life. I was telling me about his. And they were just all like, Amir, what were you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just talking. He's like, to that man? I was like, yeah, that's like totally normal. And my friends were all like, was that guy your grandpa or someone? Like a lifelong, like a long lost family member. So it's just like experiences like that that are so normal. I feel like in our culture, but... In like American culture, it's like very weird. I have a similar like experience, but from a few weeks ago here in Phoenix, there's a restaurant called Otan Sarajevo. And then some of my friends from ASU, they wanted to go to that restaurant. So I'm like, okay, guys, we'll go. And then I go and I start talking to the, the I guess the main waitress in the language. And my friends were like, like, you're like having a full conversation with this woman. Like, what could you possibly be talking to her about? And you know, they just like, it was very interesting for them to see like the dynamic, like when you switch into a different language and you switch into a different culture, like your demeanor kind of changes and like your personality is a bit different. I felt like I feel a lot more outgoing when I'm in like the Balkan culture. But if I'm like at an American restaurant or a restaurant where it's like primarily Americans, I don't know, I then I go into that like more closed off attitude but like when I was in that restaurant I felt like I was right at home like having a conversation with this woman and whatnot to both y'all do y'all feel like I know you just kind of said it like I feel like I have like sometimes two different personalities too like when I when I'm there versus here or just like I don't know do y'all feel the same way yes I definitely I I feel that way i I don't know, like when I came back, because I'd spent the longest time over in the Balkans. This summer, I spent time in both Serbia and Bosnia. And I don't know, like when I came back, I was like, oh my gosh, like I just, it feels so, I don't know, it feels quite different when you're there for like a period of time and then you come back. But even then, like, I don't know, I feel like 
when I go to a place where there's primarily Balkan people like I just fall into like that culture that way of like a not assimilating mentality, that mentality like, like falling into that mentality like automatically I don't even necessarily notice it um it's more no like I notice it when other people point it out like my friends that pointed it out when I was at that uh, Bosnian restaurant a few weeks ago I was like what do you mean they're like oh you're acting so Balkan right now like <laughs> what do you mean like this is how I am but I guess I was acting differently because I don't know it's like that Balkan sense of humor yes it's like a complete like it is a complete shift and that's something that like I've noticed too um like specifically like when I was in Switzerland I think like when I first got there and like everything was foreign to me like I didn't know anything and like um I started like thinking to myself like okay I need to start acting in these situations like in the Bulgarian mentality like I need to be more outgoing like if something isn't working like I just need to push and be stubborn and do this or I need to be like like it really is like a shift like I couldn't explain like I also yeah I know what I I feel that way when it comes to this project for example and about things because we've been very pushy and I don't know I feel like I adopted that mentality a lot by being in the Balkans for over two months this summer like that pushy because I was alone a lot of the time so it was like if somebody doesn't do this like I have to do it I have to like be assertive like get this done be a little bit pushy like be a lot like more out like more extroverted like I'm extroverted naturally but I feel like I became a lot more outgoing like we're reaching out to people that we wouldn't normally necessarily reach out to like we're going out of our comfort zone and we're like being pushy to get things done and I don't know it's like when something doesn't work out for us we're like we're gonna figure it out another another way way, because there's always a way yeah I don't know. I feel like that's a big Balkan mentality. I'm not saying that that doesn't yeah. exist in the United States, but like just the feeling that I have associated with it. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does. And I think it's interesting because I've like, I don't know if I've ever like discussed this, but these are thoughts that like I've had, like, you know, like associating different characteristics with like different parts of my identity. But it's interesting to hear that like both you and you are pointing out like the same thing. So I guess this is just something that like people that are like, either first gen or just like like experience living like in both places or spending a lot of time in both places feel like that shift that shift in like persona or whatever you want to say but yeah when you earlier you mentioned uh Balkan humor and that like I have a funny story about that also when I was and again here when I'm when I was in Europe with my friends especially in the Balkan area that's when I was able to like tell my friends I was like really uncomfortable and stuff and like that difference and then uh actually this was in switzerland but there's so many balkan people in switzerland so we were at this pizza place and uh the menu was huge i mean there was like i think there was 26 pizzas on the menu combination of everything and so the waiter like i don't know i had a feeling that he was like somewhere i think he ended up being like macedonian but i don't know i could just tell you know we have like very distinct faces and i was like that's so true Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like, you know, we have like a sixth sense. I was like, oh, whatever, mm-hmm. get an accent. And then uh, he ended up like, or my friend, at first my friend asked for the Wi-Fi password and he made a joke like, come on, bro, let me give you the menu first before the password, you're at a restaurant, you know, but that's like such a Balkan calm. I can't even like, that is so like, like our sarcasm. But my friend was like, I can't believe he just said that to me. And I was like, dude, chill. Like he was just joking. And so later we're ordering and then, uh, we all order pizzas and one of my friends she was like her and her friend were like um can I get like pizza number 22 but can I like get it just without this and without this and his response was literally just like dude there was 26 pizzas on the menu and you couldn't find something that you liked and then he was like okay I guess sure <laughs> and then um afterwards uh they were all like I thought it was kind of funny and kind of true because like come on just pick something and then they were, we were all like, that guy's so rude, like whatever. And after the, I like, I was giving him, giving him my credit card to pay after the fact. And he saw my name and he said something to me in uh, our language. And I was like, oh, this all makes sense now. And I was like laughing with him. My friends were like, how can you like laugh with him? And like, whatever, he's such an asshole. And I was like, no, he's not like, he's kind of cool. So it's just like that Balkan humor. Like that's our humor. I feel like very sarcastic, very just like, even with strangers. So that's another big difference, I feel like. Yeah, I have to 
throughout my life I have had to translate my dad's sense of humor so many times in public <laughs> it's like he'll make a joke I don't even know about what but like obviously I understand it but I'm just like not like then people are just like looking at him with a dead look in their eyes or like really confused <laughs> or offended and I'm like I have to translate the it's all in English but I still have to translate the joke because mm -hmm. the humor is completely different and I'm like he's literally just joking it's fine and I feel like I've adopted that like people can't tell when I'm sarcastic a lot of the time I make like I'm sure you know like I make a lot of <laughs> jokes so now we've kind of like highlighted the differences so then kind of what was it like having after you having spent a few years back in Bosnia after being in America right like growing up there for a little bit of time kind of how how did that shift affect you or like even like your family or your siblings or kind of what was that transition period like coming back to America? It was at like the end, very end of fifth grade, like the last month of school maybe. And I was, it's like a really weird thing. I guess it happens when you like spend a lot of time in a place. But at that point, I was not speaking any English except for literally English class because I had no reason to. You know, in my house here, I already speak Bosnian with my parents. Um, but when you're over there and everyone around you is, you know, there's no English speakers or the is, but, you know, not a use for it. So I came back and I actually noticed that like uh, filler words like, um, like I stopped using those and I start, started saying like, oh, I or like things like that. And I would be doing that like with my teachers and like other people. And I had to be like, oh, my God, like I have to focus on speaking English. And yeah, this like lasted not that like long of a time, maybe like a month or two till I was like fully back in like English mode. Cause I still did mostly grow up here, you know? So, but there was like that period where um, it was just a lot of things were weird, especially like I mentioned the play date stuff earlier, but we were like still young enough in America where it was like, you can't really go out anywhere, especially like the suburbs, of, like, you know, Austin, where am I going to go by myself? but I was so used to doing everything by myself. And I had like some older cousins there. So like, yeah, I'd go with them sometimes too, but I like totally lost my independence. So it was like a really weird shift. I remember. Um, but for my sister, she was younger. So she actually like had a, a lot harder of a time being in Bosnia because she was younger and, and she wasn't as good with the language. So she was like struggling with school a lot more and, she's she wasn't as outgoing I think because she was so small and so many new things um so she kind of fell back into place here and I fell back into place too but it was just I didn't want to I didn't want to be back and like have to be dependent and not being able to go outside and like I didn't want that and honestly I still don't <laughs> like it as much and I think look like when I talked to my parents after their plan was always to only stay there for short term but back then I thought you know it was forever like said bye to everyone here like I was never coming back yeah just them for, doing that for the sole purpose of like giving us like the experience that they did growing up and just like being better with language and all the stuff that I talked about so it was always their plan to come back to going into kind of career has um has your cult as like your cultural background or like your time like going back and forth between countries influenced your career choices like are there specific values or experiences that have played a significant role while like choosing the career path that you wanted to go down um honestly I don't think so I think that's the one part that's well you know you know how Balkan parents are and like engineer 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 doctor doctor mm -hmm. You know, so I, if we're asking like, if that, I feel like that's definitely influenced or been an influence. And I think that would have happened anywhere, anyway. But so apart from that, I don't really think so. I feel like, you know, me going to like mechanical engineering has always been about my, my passions and my interests and my skills rather than, you know, which I feel like in my case is pretty independent from. I don't know, spending time in Bosnia or America or wherever it be. Mm -hmm. Because like, I feel like personally, like with my experience, I feel like I was raised with pressure of becoming a doctor or like going into medicine. 
And so that's like what I initially ended up doing, right? Like, I mean, I still have degrees that are in science that I'm still like going to figure out what I'm going to do with because I decided like, I don't want to pursue a career in medicine. But I feel like that's like something that I have seen at least like cultural, culturally, like for my parents, like from that side of things. But that's, that's interesting to me because I went originally, I've been studying international relations um, in Washington, D.C., and I wanted to go into that. Well, like because of my background, but it was never pressure from my parents, like growing up, like I was really into history because my dad always talked to me about history and the importance of like knowing history and whatnot. So that kind of influenced my desire to go into international relations and then like to help the Balkans as like somebody who has Serbian background and American background to like go into the Balkans and be like a spokesperson for the Balkans, like as an American, not necessarily like to be a spokesperson for the United States in the Balkans, if that makes sense, but to like kind of like play both sides, but for the betterment of the Balkan region. So that's why I studied in international relations, but then I had a lot of disillusionment. So I feel like I kind of relate in a way, but like, it's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like my cultural background influenced me in a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I feel like one thing that I've noticed is, and I'm not trying to be sexist at all. Like I'm trying to be the opposite is that like, I feel like a lot of women from the Balkan area, like, like to go into STEM fields compared to like other I, I don't know like I feel like I've talked to a lot of people who are like they go into medicine um like computer science and I feel like if you like it's that like influence that I was talking about that that we had where it was like the STEM or the doctor engineer not everyone's like that but I feel like I know a lot of like I personally know a lot of people like women that particularly go versus like my women friends that are like American that they don't really like as much do that I don't know I feel like that's also one thing that's yeah, that inter- is really interesting that now that you mentioned that because now I'm thinking about all my friends um like all my um girlfriends that are from the Balkans and yeah yeah computer information systems you nursing PA computer medicine. science yeah yeah you're right I've noticed yeah. this is interesting let's let's do <laughs> let's do a poll on it we're like <laughs> post a poll on the Instagram story but I didn't realize that either that is an interesting like and even like when I think about like my family friends parents like electrical engineer I'm talking about uh the moms electrical engineer electrical engineer chemical engineer some like scientists so I feel like especially like when you come to America and stuff like it's the parents, like they have the ambition. And I think the children, they kind of want to finish what their parents started, or like, that's like, at least like how I know that, like, I've kind of viewed that situation or like some other friends and stuff. Yeah. Where it's kind of like that motivation and like drive to push for something like a more. Yeah. I feel that that's like part of the reason I changed my majors because like with international relations, I was like, there's not a solidified career path. Why am I like putting, well, why am I going into all this debt for like something that's not even guaranteed for me I'm not even like I don't know it's not what I want so I switched my major to marketing because I was like there's more of a solidified career path maybe I can do something better with this because there is that motivation and like you need to like like like, well for my dad I don't know I'm like I need to finish like the American the American dream dream. I don't know because my dad would always be like you need to get your degree so you can get a like a good job so you can make money like yes he's like not he's he's serious but there obviously there's that level of joking he's like you need to support me and your mom for everything we're helping you with like that thing where it's like you have to support your parents because they supported you in like those multi-generational households and just like the collectivist culture of the Balkans like how integrated everybody is like you talked about early but like especially in households like that collectivist culture rather than individualism I'm like I need to like have I need to make sure I have some sense of security so that I can like help my family if I need it it's like almost like a sense of duty that I feel like has been like instilled in me or that like I've like placed on my own shoulders Mm -hmm. like is there can you say anything like do you have like I because I think we I think we've talked about this before yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's part of it. And, you know, what this reminds me of, and it kind of ties into what, like, something earlier we talked about, like, effect of, like, parents being immigrants and stuff, is um, 
and I guess what I'm about to say is kind of the mentality that was passed on to me in a way, but I went skiing with uh, my parents, my family, and then one of our family friends. They're also Bosnian, but I uh, brought along one of my friends who's American and uh, I've known him for a long time. So he knows my family really well and stuff, but he was kind of, that. this was at the point, like, I think like you guys are right now where it's like about to graduate college and like looking for jobs and stuff. And he actually like ended up being like, like very religious. So like he turned like to God and he was at that time thinking like, does he want to just, he was a business major. Does he want to go into finance or does he want to, um, you know, pursue like something with the church? And so I, uh, we were on the ski, ski uh, trip or whatever. So we started asking people on the ski lift, like, would you rather do like what you love or do what, like, I don't know, do what you love or do what like will make you money, right? So we were asking that around and then my my friend had the idea, oh, let me ask your parents and the other, my family friend's parents that. So we're at dinner and we asked that question and it kind of got emotional because they started talking about, you know, like for us growing up, that wasn't ever a question because, you know, we have to, we came to this country with like nothing and we have to support ourselves and our family. It wasn't ever a matter of like, oh, let me like try doing what I love. Like, no, like I need to do what's going to like, you know, like my parents came here and when I was born, they were sleeping on a mattress, you know, but they didn't have anything. So it wasn't like, they didn't have a mentality of like, oh, my, should I do what I love right now? Quit my job, you know? And I feel like that mentality was already there when they were in Bosnia, but even more amplified now coming here to a new place. So they kind of told them like, listen, Jacob, to my friend, like you can't ask us that because we grew up totally differently. You know, we never had that like we would pursue our passions but not not for work you know for work we need to support family and our you know have that supporting the generations like beneath you and above you so and that's kind of it was never like really told to me that directly before but I feel like that's something that I also grew up with you know I can have my passions I can have this but at the end of the day I need to have like a solid career too so I feel like in that way it's affected me. I I feel like my parents were never the type to be like, you have to be an engineer. Right. But it was kind of like both my parents were, my grandpa was, my uncle is, you know, I I feel like it's just also part of the culture too, in a way. How do you see the preservation of like Bosnian culture within your family while in America? You mentioned like, I think you mentioned you had another family member here or something. Do you have like, yeah, I have my, um, my direct family here then my grandparents are here okay so then what I'm trying to get at is kind of how do you guys um maintain and preserve um like Bosnian culture while being here also what is the Bosnian or general Balkan culture like in Austin Texas or Texas in general I know it's a huge state so maybe just Austin yeah I mean honestly I don't know like I feel like in terms of like preserving culture I mean I think language is a is a big one where we only speak uh Bosnian and I know sometimes like in our we have like a extended like I call them family friends just because I've known them since I was born but like a lot of us Bosnians that my even parents some of them they knew some of them in college too back in Sarajevo so like known them for a long time and uh so that's kind of like been my Bosnian culture experience here because like you know the weekend Bosnian parties things like that um and out of like other kids families like uh there's two kids that they they can understand it but one of them can't speak like I think they pretty much both can't speak the language at all and I think you know if you don't have language then it's a lot harder I'm thinking to be like what's going to be passed on to their kids probably a lot less you know because they don't I have the humor we talked about they probably can't go back and live there comfortably right you know or have a more even Bosnian Croatian experience Serbian experience when they go back there because you know if they don't speak the language you already kind of feel like an outsider anyway so I think language is huge especially to be passed on like to my children and stuff and in terms of other culture I mean in terms of direct culture with like religion and things like that I feel like um like even the way we decorate our house we don't really have that much of that but everything we talked about earlier with just like, you know, the more social things, I think that's also something that, and as well as career 
parts too that I would want to preserve in in my family. Not to like pinpoint what that is. Like I don't really. It's kind of like everything we talked about. You know, the the, the jokes, the the sociableness, the independence, all that stuff. I think is is what I love about our culture as well. And in terms of yeah, I talked about it a little. I feel like in Austin. There are some people I've met in like college that is like, oh, like I know, I know another Bosnian here and there, you know, and we've made friends. But yeah, in terms of just the culture that I ex- experienced, it's always been just like my family, friends and stuff. I don't, I, I haven't gone to any like of those, like, I know they have like the professional like meetups and stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever been to one of those or not, but I haven't like done any of like that stuff really. I feel like it's similar with my family like in that regard to like the family friend circle like um like there are Bulgarians in Arizona but it's like I have my family friends like my like the 10 families and that we all like grew up together like the kids and it's like it kind of like stays between us and that's like kind of how we've like preserved like our culture so I think it's like kind of similar to how you're like describing it I think but yeah have you ever gone to like see those events um I'm in the Serbian American professional networking group in LinkedIn. Um, I think sometimes there's something at one of the Serbian churches, but I've never been. I'm just in that, I'm in that networking group, I suppose. But I mean, yeah, I think I'm more at like my experience being involved in the Serbian culture or community in Arizona is like going to events and stuff not necessarily like I know other families obviously but it's more like I grew up doing folklore the folk dancing and stuff like that so that was like a big way of preserving my culture and I guess like my grandmother my baba lives here and in that way like that was a big way because she does not speak any English so that's how I had to get the language and like learn a lot of like the cultural social elements Mm -hmm. and stuff like that a lot of Serbians in Arizona are directly from the former Yugoslavia so I guess that was a big help with learning about the culture and I just love like we found the statistics recently but there are a lot of people from the Balkans here and I love that about Phoenix Mm -hmm. like I also grew up like in Greek culture kind of um like I went to a Greek Orthodox elementary school so I was always involved in that so I just I've always I guess like been interacting with like groups from across the Balkans which I really love that different diaspora so I've always really loved that I mean when I was younger I guess like this kind of relates to the family thing but my grandmother she lived in this neighborhood it was just a bunch of different like people from the former Yugoslavia and I used to say like that is Yugoslavia like her apartment complex and I literally thought I was there because (laughs) that's like I associated her um apartment complex with the language with the food with the culture so like I literally thought I was there like when I would enter that apartment complex Mm -hmm. like I was like this is what it must look like over there because I thought I was there I had like a similar experience growing up like there's an apartment complex like literally like you know the one I'm talking it's like right by my house and there's like a lot of Serbians that live there and I and like my parent my father he was friends with like some of them so growing up I'd go like play dates and stuff in like that area and like as, again I would associate it like yeah yeah what do you think about the Balkan diaspora and building peace in America you know I feel like ever since the war there's been obviously a lot of division within, you know, Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, like how we all view each other. And I feel like us who are like the first generation or second generation, uh, whichever one it is, you know, I feel like a lot of us get our opinions from our parents and from our families and where we grew up. Um, but it's, it's like very emotional topic. And I personally like, like, for example, I remember my first or second week of college we had to like do in one class just stand up and talk for 30 seconds about ourselves and I said something about being Bosnian and some Croatian dude literally interrupted me screamed from the back of the class was like hey brate, ima, you know and he was Croatian I went to his house his family they were both Croatian and both his parents had pretty much the same story as my parents but just on the Croatian side you know so it was like I went to their house and I felt at home. He was immediately a friend to me from 
interrupting my speech and like shouting something across the class, which also something would never happen in any other culture. I just want to say that. That's, that's, that's true. accurate. Yeah. So it's like those little things I've had, like, you know, I'm sure you guys all have plenty of stories that are similar to that. And I feel like a lot of people do, but then something political gets brought up and then all that shuts down, you know, that can end like, a relationship instantly if people are if it's like very emotional i honestly see, see them as the same i really do because we have all the cultural stuff that we talk about we have like you know we have different dances different religion different things we put in our houses but i mean you know that stuff is not as important to me as like you know the, just the people people's people to people social interactions that we have and I feel like all of those translate one to one, whether it's a Bosnian to a Croatian, Croatian to Serbian, even like Serbian to Macedonian, you know, I feel like a lot of our stuff is still the same. And I just wish that sometimes because I have met people that like, for example, when I was celebrating that Novak Joel coach won a tournament or something, and maybe I like posted something like about the game. And I've had like a, someone Bosnian be like, how dare you like post that? You know, he's Serbian. And I'm like, oh, my God. Or like supporting Croatia in the 2018 World Cup. You know, I was there and I had a jersey and I was screaming with everyone else. And so was my whole family, you know, just because, you know, there was in Sarajevo, there was rallies during that World Cup to support our brothers in Croatia, you know. So I feel like there is a lot of unity, but, you know, a lot of positive can be like eliminated so quickly with just like one negative thing. Okay, so building like off of that, do you have any advice for us on preserving our cultures while living in America? Um, I mean, I kind of talked about earlier about language. I think language is a big one, but obviously, you know, as I don't speak, I speak Bosnian very, very, very well. I can understand everything, but even then I'm not as fluent as someone there. So yeah, it's, it's going to keep dwindling down because, you know, that's just the nature of passing the down the language when you're not in the environment. One huge thing, which kind of relates to the whole thing is teaching our children not to hate each other. Because my parents always taught me they had their own stories, but they've always said, you know, we're all, we're all the same people. We all were the same people. There's differences, but we should all love each other. And that's how I grew up. And I think that will kind of make our culture even bigger, you know? It'll be easier to celebrate being with the Serbian or Croatian, you know, instead of narrowing down, oh, we're Bosnia, you're this, you're that. I think preserving culture, you know, it's easy to preserve a big culture. I mean, think about all like the, the Indians and I don't know how many there are in Arizona, but there's so many Indians here and it's so easy for the them numbers. to preserve. Yes, yes, yes. It's easy for them to preserve their culture because, you know, there's so many of them, they all do their things together. But if we grow up and teach our kids to hate each other, then you're only going to have the Bosnian stuff and the Croatian stuff. And we know we're all going to be separate groups in such a small place like the Balkan is already, you know? So I think what you guys tie in your whole project into, I think that's like one of the main parts about preserving our culture too, is not forgetting that, um, that we should all love each other just no matter where we're from specifically. And to highlight, like, we can be proud, we should be proud and preserve our individual cultures, like whether it's like ethnic, like regional country, but still like, yeah, recognizing that we have more similarities than we have differences. Like a lot of our cultures are basically the same. There's a lot of similarities. So I think like we can all highlight our individual like cultures and stuff, but recognize like- And appreciate others Exactly. And like, that's something like, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of how I bonded like with both of you, like in that regard, right? Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not Serbian, I'm not Bosnian, I'm Bulgarian, right? But we like, we're able to find like commonalities in that. And I feel like that's kind of how our friendship was able to grow mm-hmm. and build. So. Yeah. And I think what you guys said, I, I do want to say like, I wasn't, I didn't mean for us to be one by, we just, obviously we all have different cultures. Like you guys said of Bosnia versus Serbia and all this stuff. But like you said, it's about highlighting things we have in common and not focusing on what we don't. 